Hey y'all, so today we're going to be talking about how to generate images using stable diffusion in 10 minutes or less, even if you don't know how to code and you don't own a fancy computer. So stable diffusion is an AI model that takes a prompt, typically in the form of an English sentence, and then generates images based on that prompt. You've probably seen examples of this online, whether they were from stable diffusion itself or DALI or any of the other really cool AI models out there. Okay, so getting things started, um, if you go to the description for the video, you should see a link to a Google Colab notebook. Um, that's what we're going to be using for most of the tutorial, so go ahead and open that up. Um, if you don't have a Google account, you'll need to make one, but if you have a Gmail, you should be good to go. So Google Colab, for people who aren't familiar, is kind of like Google Docs, um, but instead of just sharing formatted text files like Microsoft Word files, it uh, also shares code that you can run, uh, which like executable code in technical terms. Um, and we call this file type a notebook. So a notebook includes both the code and some text explaining the code. Um, and that's what we'll be using today. Um, and that's great because then you can download someone else's notebook like mine here um, and uh, use their code. And then you too can be generating paintings of Tony Soprano on a horse holding an iPad. So that's exciting, huh? Um, okay, so uh, kind of getting into things, um, the another important thing to just mention about Google Colab is that uh, it's really great because it allows you to run code on a GPU, um, a graphic processing unit, and unless you have a computer with an NVIDIA GPU, which would cost at least $1,000, um, it'd be really hard to run some of these models, um, but on Google Colab you can do it for free, um, and that's really nice. So uh, first things first, uh, once you have this page up, you're going to want to go here and click Save a Copy and Drive. Click File and then Save a Copy and Drive. That should open a new tab. Um, it might, if your browser has privacy settings, it might ask you to approve it. But then it should bring you to this. It looks the exact same, except up here it says Copy of Stable Diffusion instead of just Stable Diffusion. You might get this warning. It's not a problem. Uh, you can close it if it makes you feel anxious, um, and we'll be kind of moving from there. So this model comes from a group called Hugging Face, um, and you will need a Hugging Face account in order to use this notebook. That's okay because it's free. Um, so if you just click the link huggingface.co slash join, it should take you to a page that looks like this. Um, so just put in an email address and a password, and uh, you, you should be granted access. Um, and then uh, in Code Snippet 2, we'll talk about that in a second, but there's this license for the model. So you'll want to read over that. There's a link. That's what that link is to right there. Um, the, the license is about six pages. Um, I recommend you read through it just to make sure you're not using the model in any inappropriate or socially harmful ways, um, because we don't want to do that, right? Um, and then once you're done reading through that, you can come back here. Uh, I've also included the uh, kind of use restrictions here just for a refresher, because I know, you know, after you read all that text, you might forget some stuff. So there's some use restrictions there. Um, and uh, we can start by just running this first code snippet. So in Google Colab, uh, there are these code snippets and they have a play button. We'll run that. Um, again, I'm assuming you already made an account. Once you do that, you'll want to click this link, which is where you'll accept the terms and conditions for the specific model we're using, Stable Diffusion. So um, when you click that link, you should be brought somewhere that looks kind of like this. Um, and you'll want to ac click the Access Repository and fill out your information there. So once you've done that, you can come back to the notebook, everything should be installed. That's kind of just getting us our basic stuff set up. Um, and then we can run this line. This is going to ask us to lo log into Hugging Face. It's going to give us this cute logo. Um, and it's going to ask for a token. So if we click this link, we'll be brought to the page for a token. Once you have an account, uh, you'll be able to access this dashboard. And you hit New Token. We're going to say it's for Colab. And we want a read token, not a write token. Oh, whoops, a read token. Um, so we generate that token, and we're going to copy it right there. Um, and then we'll go back to our notebook, and we're going to paste it in here and hit Enter. 
and it should say login successful. You'll also get this red warning sometimes. That's not a big deal. As long as the login was successful, you're good to go. So next we're gonna kind of set up our model and all the things involved with that, what we sometimes call a pipeline. So you can just hit play on the first one and the second one. Um, if you want to remove the not safe for work safety checker, um, you can change this line to say true instead of false, true with a capital T, make sure you do that. Um, that's useful because sometimes you might be creating a piece of art or something that kind of fails their safety checker, but I caution you against doing it just because uh, a lot of times you'll end up with kind of violent or sexual images, uh, even if your prompt isn't explicitly violent or sexual, just because the model was trained on large sets of images from the internet. So just be careful if you change that setting. Um, I just don't want anyone to be exposed to images that would be upsetting or hurtful to them. Um, so as this goes along, you should be seeing these download bars. If if running this code hits an error that looks roughly like this, um, that means that you forgot to accept the terms from the model. So just go back to that step and then restart from the beginning. You'll probably, if you need to restart from the beginning, have to hit disconnect and delete runtime. Um, that kind of just like resets the whole process here. Um, but yeah, just make sure you set, accept those credentials. And then once this code runs, it'll take about a minute in my experience. Um, you can go to the next code snippet, which is really where the rubber meets the road. This is where we give it a prompt um, describing the image, and we also tell it how many images we want to make. So if we run it right now, it'll give us one image that is a painting of Tony Soprano from The Sopranos riding a horse and holding an iPad. Uh, that should take about 15 seconds or less, maybe 30, depending on the image. Sometimes it'll take longer. Um, and this bar should be filling up. Um, you shouldn't hit an error there. So we've got our image. If we want to save it, um, we should right click on it and hit save image as and then save it. Uh, I'm not going to do that because uh, I don't care about this image. I don't want to save it. Um, but uh, yeah, and each time you rerun it, it will delete that image. So if you want the image, make sure you save it. But then you can rerun this cell uh, over and over again. So like, let's say instead of Tony Soprano holding an iPad on a horse, I want a picture of a pastel goth Bratz doll. And let's say instead of one image this time, I want two. I can just rerun the prompt. Um, and it will uh, generate two images of a pastel goth brat stall. We'll see how that goes in just a second. Um, and over the course of this, I haven't really been explaining individual lines of code. Um, this is more just how to use this. If you're interested in uh, kind of the more nitty gritty details, I will include links in the description, uh, both explaining the model and also for the more ambitious uh, viewers, there will also be descriptions of how to implement it locally. Um, so check that out if you're interested. Okay, so we've got our pastel goth brat stalls uh, set up here. And if we wanna save them again, we would hit save image because it will overwrite them each time we run. Um, but that's it. We've kind of got our basic setup. You can keep generating images. If you ever hit an error and uh, things just stop working, just kind of delete your runtime and restart from the beginning and uh, you should be good to go. All right, well, I hope you all enjoy playing with this, whether you're coders or tinkerers or artists. Um, and I also hope it shows you, you know, the possibilities of both uh, Google Colab and Python coding, because you can really do a lot of stuff with very few lines of code, um, even if you borrow them from other people. All right, well, um, enjoy playing with this. And until next time, uh, I hope you have a good one.